Hi, this is another video to show how to go about presenting a very particular type of geological data that has a surprising variety of uses within the subject. I want us to look at how we actually go about plotting and interpreting triangular graphs. As you can see from the image here, triangular graphs are well named. They are not entirely peculiar to geology, but they do have a wide variety of uses within the subject. You may not have come across them, though, in many other subjects, perhaps other than geography. Now, they're particularly useful where you have a, a particular set of circumstances. The data needs to be percentage data. It needs to have three variables, although one of these variables can be other if need be. And your data needs to add up to 100%. So it's a way of showing the divisions of a, of a total where you have three variables. Now we find them particularly useful where we have multiple data points. So if we have lots of samples, to show on one graph and to be able to make comparisons and look for clustering, triangular graphs are ideal. Okay, let's look at how we actually go about plotting these. This is a blank triangular graph. You'll see there are three axes here marked with these arrows. Now these three axes can be lots of different variables. For this example though, I'm going to stick to fairly simple sand, silt and clay to show how grain size, for example, or grain sorting within a sediment could be shown on a triangular graph. Now the key thing with a graph like this is to remember the sequence in which we read the graph, because we always read these axes in a clockwise way. Let me show you. If we have some data, two samples that have been sieved and we have a percentage then for each sample for the sand grain size, for silk grain size and for a clay grain size. Sample one you see has 40% sand. So if we look on the bottom axis there, we can find 40%. But you can see there are two lines going out from the 40% sand point. The line that we want, though, is the one that points to the next axis, going around in this clockwise way. So the point that represents sample 1 must be somewhere along that line. Now sample 1 has 30% silt, so again we go up the axis labelled silt, we find 30% point, and we then follow the line that goes towards the next axis. So the point that represents sample 1 is where these two lines cross. Now we can check this with our third piece of data, 30% clay. So again we follow the clay axis, down to 30% and we draw and we have our line going to the next axis where these three points cross that's where we have our data point but actually all we actually need to plot on our graph is that point let me show you with another uh, example sample 2 has 55% sand. So sample 2 will be somewhere along that line. But the 55% sand going up on a line towards the silt axis. It has 35% silt. So the line there going towards the clay axis from the 35 point on the silt line goes through there. And finally as a check we've got our 10% clay there we go. And where those three points intersect, 
that's our data point. So we've got two data points on this graph. We could plot, we could plot many, many more. Okay. That's how we plot a triangular graph. How do we then interpret one? This is a very common application of the triangular graph. This is a classification of soils. Notice on this one, though, the clay and the silt have been transposed compared to the previous one. It's not a, it doesn't really matter which way round they're plotted. It works in the same way. Now, you can see there is a star marked on this graph. That star, which is in the clay soil uh, zone, consists of 30% sand. So if we look at the line there, 52% clay and 18% silt. So where those three lines all meet, that gives us our data point. Okay, what I'd like you to do is using that graph, can you work out what type of soil each of these samples actually are? Another application of a similar type of diagram is a classification of igneous rocks. This is known as a QAP diagram. You can see the three points here are quartz, alkali-rich or orthoclase feldspar, and plagioclase feldspar. You'll notice though the lines on this graph don't run in the same direction as the lines on a more traditional triangular graph. On this graph, we really only have two axes. We have our axis along the bottom, which shows the relative proportion of orthoclase and plagioclase within an igneous rock. The two lines going up towards the apex of the triangle, actually both show quartz and the percentage of quartz that we find within a rock. So it's a slightly different take on this triangular diagram. Just to see how this works, can you now identify which type of rocks these samples So, to summarise, any geological data where we have three variables that add up to 100% can be plotted in large numbers on one graph to be able to make comparisons. This classification of mafic igneous rocks demonstrates how this can be done. It's a very useful technique. It's something that you will be using through your geological careers. I hope that was helpful. I'd like you to have a go at the exercises and bring them into class. I'll see you then.